Welcome to the Room Editor tutorial series for Escape Simulator 2. In this video, we'll go over the Room Editor interface. You'll learn how to navigate the 3D workspace, place and manipulate props, and explore the in-game menus for props, logic, and assets. This might not be the flashiest part of building a room, but mastering these basics will save you time and frustration. Even experienced builders may pick up a tip or two, so stick around. To enter the Room Editor workspace, choose Build from the game's main menu. Here, you can choose to create a new room, open an existing one, or delete an old room. Along the top of the screen, you can also access preset or tutorial rooms to help you get started. Today, I'll choose Create a New Room and click the Create button on the bottom of the screen and give my room a name. New rooms come with a few essential props already placed, a spawn point where the player starts the level, a finish camera to end the room, and a basic light to illuminate the level both for the player and for you behind the scenes. You can test this basic setup right away by pressing the play button at the top left. Throughout the building process, you'll be playtesting often to preview your build live and to test the player experience. When you're done testing, press Escape on your keyboard to return to the editor. The five tabs at the top left of the room editor let you switch between different menus, settings, props, logic, building, and assets. You can quickly switch between them at any time by pressing Tab on your keyboard. The Props tab is your main library of 3D props from the base game, tables, decorations, tools, and more. These are props that your player will see and interact with. You can search by keyword at the top or filter by theme or category. Do not underestimate the simple shapes section. These basic blocks are the foundation for creating custom props without having to use a separate 3D modeling program. With a bit of creativity and paint, you can build and customize your own unique props for those times when you can't find exactly what you need from the main ES2 props menu. You can also add frequently used props to your favorites group using the star icon on each prop. The logic tab contains tools that control the level behind the scenes. The player will never see these logic props, but they will shape their whole game experience. You, as the builder, will use these logic props to program your level, such as set up puzzles, control triggers and interactions, move the player around with teleports, add hints for the walkthrough, and adjust environmental elements like lighting, skies, or water. The Build tab lets you add structure to your room, like floors, walls, doors, windows, and stairs. The Assets tab contains all of your imported content, so custom 3D models, materials, sounds, and textures, all gathered in one place. In the Settings menu, you can save or exit your room, or discard all changes made during this session. You can also open your UGC folder directly, so this is where your imported textures, sounds, and models are stored. When you select a prop or a logic, the Properties pane on the right displays all its available settings. From here, you can rename props, assign parents, or adjust properties. And we will cover setting the properties for behaviors and logic in future videos. When you're in the Properties pane, you can hover over any property to see a tooltip describing what that property does and how it works. Now, I really want to underline this. Tooltips are an incredibly useful feature, but it's easy to miss if you don't know that they're there. There's a lot to know in the room editor, and these small pop-ups are a shortcut to important information without having to look up anything online. You can test your level at any time by pressing the play button, as we just did, or pressing P on your keyboard. To start playtesting from your current camera position, hold Alt and press P. So this is especially useful when working on larger rooms, so it can allow you to skip the starting area of the level. Now let's talk about navigating around the editor. It's actually a lot like moving around in any other game. Uh, here are all the shortcuts you'll need to get around the 3D viewport. Press and hold the right mouse button while using WASD to move your camera. 
You can press Q and E to move vertically up and down. Holding the right mouse button while moving the mouse lets you rotate and look around freely. Hold the middle mouse button to pan the camera left, right, up or down. And scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. You can also adjust the zoom speed by holding the right mouse button while scrolling. Hold control while scrolling and that allows you to zoom in in smaller, more precise increments. So take note of the scene orientation gizmo at the top right of the screen. It shows the direction of the X, Y, and Z axes in 3D space. You can click any axis to snap your camera to that perspective. So for example, clicking the green Y moves you to a bird's eye view where you can pan over your scene with the middle mouse button. At any point, you can see a list of all of the keyboard shortcuts from the settings menu, options, and then room editor. You can also reassign these shortcuts if you would like. Props are what we call any 3D object that the player will see or interact with in the room. Now, some props will simply decorate your room, like furniture, carpets, and paintings, and other props will be interacted with by the player, like notes, keys, drawers. Let's go over manipulating and placing props within the 3D space. So first of all, select any prop by left-clicking it. Hold Control or Shift to select or deselect multiple props. Or you can also drag select on an area with the left mouse button to select everything inside the box that you draw. If you want to select only the top level parent props in an area, do the drag select option while holding Alt. You can right click anywhere to open a prop selection menu. And this allows you to choose between overlapping props in that area. Press F to focus on your selected prop, and this will center it into view and zoom you in. Press escape or right click to deselect all props. This is definitely something you're gonna to wanna to remember. Press control space to bring up the search function. And here you can search for a prop in the scene by name. This means you're gonna to wanna to give your props unique names, especially the props that are important or that you're gonna to wanna to come back to often, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Let's place our first prop into the scene. So at the top left of your screen, open the props tab, find a prop, and simply drag and drop it into your room. Or you can click to select the prop and then click to place. So here, I'm gonna place a cube, standard, classic. When I select the cube, you'll see what's called a gizmo appear around the prop. So these red, green, and blue colored handles represent the X, Y, and Z axes, which together allow us to point to a coordinate in the 3D space. There are three different transform gizmos. The location gizmo, which lets you move a prop. The rotation, that lets you turn a prop. And the scale gizmo, that lets you resize a prop. And if you look up to the top of your screen, you have three buttons that let you switch between them. Or you can press W, E, or R on your keyboard to switch between them. So to manipulate a prop using a gizmo, select the red, green, or blue handles to transform along the X, Y, or Z axes, and then select the center handle to transform the prop on all three axes at once. Here are some quick shortcuts for using the gizmos and manipulating props. So with a prop selected, press T on your keyboard for a quick rotation of 90 degrees. Use the arrow keys to nudge the prop a grid unit in any direction. Holding control while using the location gizmo with your mouse snaps and rounds movement to the nearest grid unit for more precise alignment. So the length of this grid unit is defined by the size of your grid in the room editor cog menu on the left side panel. We'll go over the grid a bit more in detail in the building video. At any point, you can manually input or adjust the values for the prop's location, rotation, or scale at the very top of the prop's properties pane at the right. When moving a prop, you can toggle between global and local axes by using the button at the top of your screen or pressing Q while a prop is selected. In global mode, movement follows the world's coordinate system as seen here with this cube. In local mode, movement follows the prop's own orientation. So for example, if I rotate this cube 45 degrees and move it in local mode, 
It moves along its rotated axis instead of the world's flat grid. Now let's go over deleting, copying, and hiding props, as well as how to undo any mistakes you might make. Press Delete or X to remove a prop from the workspace. You can press Ctrl-C or Ctrl-D to duplicate a prop. Duplicating props keeps all references and connections to other props, like parents, locks, and actions. You can hide props from view if your workspace is getting too cluttered. To hide a prop from view, press H while it's selected. Press Shift-H to hide everything except the selected prop. Press Ctrl-H to unhide all hidden props. So, you made a mistake? It happens. We do it all the time. Press Ctrl-Z to undo the previous action, and press Ctrl-Shift-Z to redo it. You can also use the Undo and Redo buttons on the left side of the viewport. Undo history goes all the way back to your first action in the current session. So even if you make a series of mistakes, you can undo all of it. For better organization, you can create a hierarchy by assigning parent and child relationships. And any transformation applied to a parent, like moving, rotating, or scaling, will also affect its children. So when a prop is selected, its parents and children appear in the hierarchy tab on the properties pane. As an example, I'll add a second, smaller cube. And by clicking the plus button, I'll add the larger cube as a parent. Now, You'll see when I manipulate the large cube, the smaller one moves with it. So this is useful for keeping complex setups together when they are transformed, like for instance, drawers inside a desk or items in a bookshelf. Good hierarchy structure keeps your workspace organized and is essential to making animations and player interactions work correctly. When you're ready, you can publish your room to the Steam Workshop from the settings menu. And here you can rename your room Add a description, you can position the camera for a thumbnail, and add tags so players can find it more easily on the workshop. When uploading, choose between public, Steam friends only, unlisted, or hidden visibility options. Unlisted rooms can be shared privately via the link, and hidden uploads work well as cloud backups for your projects. I always recommend regularly publishing an updated, hidden version of your room on the Steam Workshop, so you'll have an online backup and never risk accidentally deleting or losing it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.